This is The Breakfast Club. My name is Zenzel Ndeveli. David. Welcome to Asake Online. And in our program today, we want to find more about Zimbabwe Christian Alliance, the work that they do. I know a number of organizations have faced challenges, especially during the COVID pandemic, you know, implementing activities. But some of these organizations as well have been helping, you know, communities, individuals, uh, with a, a number of uh, you know, facilities or services because uh, the past two years or the year and a half have not been easy because of the, the lockdown and the COVID pandemic. So in the program today, we'll be talking to Mwavizita Tonga and Lynette Dube, who are program officers at uh, Zimbabwe Christian Alliance. Tonga, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. But for someone who doesn't know what Christian Alliance is, uh, can you briefly tell us about Christian Alliance? At, uh, Zimbabwe Christian Alliance is a faith-based organization uh, that operates uh, throughout Zimbabwe, uh, basically in all the 10 provinces. Uh, we work with uh, Christians, um, lead, Christian leaders, uh, women and youth. Um, the organization is guided by three uh, pillars which are advocacy, um, peace building and strategic alliance. Uh, under advocacy uh, department, uh, we do have uh, local level advocacy where we work with uh, local authorities and any other uh, organizations that work at um, grassroots level. Then at national level, uh, we do influence uh, policy. Um, under a peace building uh, department, uh, the organization is um, actively involved in uh, transformation, uh, peace building, and community cohesion uh, activities uh, throughout Zimbabwe. Uh, we have been uh, actively involved in electoral, pro electoral processes, uh, national healing processes um, over the past uh, 15 years. Under strategic alliances, the organization uh, works with um, apex organizations such as uh, NPRC, uh, ZEC, so that they augment and complement the work that these uh, organizations uh, are doing. So do you like have uh, community structures where you collaborate with them? Because you, you seem to be a national organization. How do you coordinate your work? Okay, the organization has got uh, uh, two uh, distinct uh, structures. We've got uh, a structure that is called uh, the hub. Uh, this hub is composed of uh, church uh, leaders, uh, women and youth within uh, a specified area of uh, operation. We also uh, have uh, what we call local advocacy uh, champions. Uh, this is a structure uh, that is um, mandated uh, to carry out advocacy within any specified area that we, we, we work with or work, work in. I know for the past year the, it has been difficult for people and organizations to work because of uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic and as an organization, what kind of activities were you doing during this time? Um, as an organization, um, over the past year we've been doing what we call uh, a hybrid process whereby we're doing some of our activities online uh, and also doing some of the activities uh, physically. Uh, the online activities were basically done on WhatsApp and Zoom so that we subvert uh, the lockdown restrictions. However, after the lockdown restrictions were, were eased, we were now able to uh, do uh, these uh, physical meetings. What would you say are some of the challenges that uh, maybe as an organization and your members uh, faced during the COVID pandemic? Of course, um, the major challenge that, that we had was the inability to reach out to all our structures uh, throughout Zimbabwe. If you look at the issue of um, uh, mobile uh, penetration or uh, reach to areas such as Ngai, we're not able to uh, effectively uh, carry out uh, online uh, engagement with these uh, communities. So we um, couldn't manage to um, effectively uh, do programming there. And also we usually get uh, structural challenges in terms of getting uh, memorandums of, memorandum of understanding uh, with local authorities. That in its um, 
sense um, limits us in terms of uh, penetrating uh, some of the far-reaching communities that we would have loved to work in. Uh, it's, we now, I mean, have partially opened and uh, people are moving around and we, of course, we have uh, the, the vaccination program that is going on. Amongst the people that you work with, what is the, I mean, the enthusiasm or the perception when it comes to the issue of, uh, you know, vaccination? Well, uh, being a faith-based uh, organization, uh, there are quite a number of uh, uh, issues that we noted in terms of uh, the whole uh, coronavirus discourse. Uh, in terms of uh, how uh, the, 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 the Christians are reacting to uh, this pandemic, uh, in particular the issue of the vaccination vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the uh, biblical uh, connotations that are, are related to, to, to that effect. As an organization, we have um, tried uh, to disseminate as much information as we could in terms of uh, uh, promoting uh, the WHO, the World Health Organization um, uh, requirements for, for, for one to uh, prevent the spread, spread of uh, coronavirus. However, uh, in terms of um, the vaccination uh, rollout program, we have noted, there's a survey that we did, did as an organization and noted that um, a number of uh, Christians are not embracing um, the vaccination uh, process. So you, you are the guys who think that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. But <laughs> <laughs> what do you think are some of the, you know, these, where are these perceptions coming from? Or where are these theories coming from? Is it lack of information? Is it uh, spirituality? Or is within the churches itself? Because we've seen some of the, you know, pastors preaching the message of the message of the, uh, the, 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 the mark of the beast. Apparently, there are quite a number of uh, factors that are, are fitting into that uh, perception. Uh, chief among them being the, the religious uh, issue that we've been talking about. And also, we noted that um, uh, religion and science are somewhat uh, interlinked. You find out that some of the uh, Christians are saying that they cannot take this vaccine because of um, um, medical side effects that come with it, as well as um, uh, the religious, uh, the mark of the beast um, uh, talk that normally uh, informs uh, Christians' uh, perspectives. So are you carrying out any awareness programs to try and uh, you know, convince people that uh, under the current conditions, uh, one of the things to prevent or to try and minimize the effects of uh, COVID-19 is getting a vaccination? Yes, as an organization, we are doing uh, quite a number of interventions, uh, both online and physically. Uh, in terms of uh, online interventions, we uh, do carry out um, radio shows, we do carry out um, uh, WhatsApp messaging, uh, encouraging people to, uh, to be aware or to, 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 to prevent the spread of uh, um, the virus. However, in terms of um, the, vac the coronavirus uh, vaccination uh, program, uh, we are guided by the constitution. It's up to the individual to uh, take uh, uh, the vaccine or not. We cannot force that individual as is said in the constitution. Lynette, welcome to the program. Um, the previous speaker or the previous guest, Utonga, mentioned some of the issues that uh, or the areas where you focus on and he talked about, uh, you know, advocacy in the community and peace interventions that you are, are doing. Can you tell us uh, about, uh, you know, some of these activities, especially looking at peace building in communities? Okay, uh, thank you. So in terms of peace building work, we have managed to um, help communities to identify some of the issues that are major drivers of conflict. And we have set up structures which are inclusive of church leaders, traditional leaders, and some of the key stakeholders in government offices who are working together as what we call the local peace committee. So their key role in the communities is to identify early warning signs or systems of conflict and possibly come up with an intervention to address some of these challenges before they um, 
become a, a major challenge. So we have been working in areas such as Gwanda, where you note that uh, there have been issues with artisanal miners. So the local peace structure has been working with some of the government stakeholders in that area to address the issue of artisanal miners, where there have been reports of violence that have been occurring. So the local peace structure is responsible for noting some of the challenges and possibly uh, providing any assistance which may be needed in that area. Also, one of the key things that we have been doing around peace building is to provide psychosocial support. So as an organization, as my colleague highlighted, we are working uh, with church leaders primarily. So their role in communities has, to, has been to provide psychosocial support wherein communities have been having challenges, particularly uh, coming to terms with the COVID pandemic and some of the effects therein. So our church leaders have been counseling anyone who is in need of, of um, the service. Okay, you, you work with communities and uh, of course the past year many communities were affected by COVID uh, in terms of uh, you know, losing employment, source of revenue, but also some organizations have reported violence, domestic violence being the increase. And uh, Lina is a Christian organization. What are some of the things that you've been doing uh, to help the community you know, deal with these issues? So as an organization, we have trained church leaders to provide psychosocial support to people that are in need of the service. So in the various project areas where we are working, church leaders are on standby to provide psychosocial support, but not only to the communities at large, but we have also been working um, in quarantine centers and isolation centers through the government structures wherein where there is need for psychosocial support our church leaders are readily available to provide the service so that people are able to come to terms with some of the challenges that they are facing as a result of either having been um, having tested positive or having been affected with the pandemic be it your relatives or anyone who is close to them Zimbabwe is a polarized society, and mainly in communities you find that there are different political parties, people are divided on religious lines and all those kind of things. How easy is it for you to do things like peace building within communities? So as an organization, I'll, I'll start off by explaining um, the religious aspect of it. As Zimbabwe Christian Alliance, we work with church leaders from different denominations. We are all encompassing be it they are from the apostolic sect, be it they are from the Pentecostal sect and so on. So we work with different church leaders. So already that gives us a, a, an advantage in that it's easy for us to then penetrate in, into the Christian community because we are already working with all these different church leaders. Then also in terms of peace building, I did highlight that we have um, local peace committees these local peace committees are made up of uh, various stakeholders who are inclusive of the different political parties that you are highlighting, but they are also inclusive of traditional leaders, um, inclusive of church leaders, women and other government stakeholders. So in terms of our structural um, composition, it's all encompassing. So that already gives us an advantage in terms of penetrating any community that we go into. Uh, maybe, what would you say are some of your success stories working in the communities? Uh, in terms of successes, we have quite a number of successes that we can attribute to the organization. Uh, I think the landmark one is the Save Zimbabwe campaign, which uh, church leaders took an active role, culminated in the global political agreement. So I think that's one of the landmark um, success stories of the organization. But also, in terms of peace building, we have done quite a lot of work in Vovamine uh, to address some of the conflicts which have arisen. And we were working in partnership with NPRC and the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission to address that issue. 
Then in terms of advocacy, uh, we have done quite a lot of work um, wherein we have capacitated our local structures with knowledge around constitutional literacy, which has enabled them to engage their duty bearers or service providers to ensure that service delivery issues are addressed and taken care of in the various communities. Uh, my last question is, uh, we, I mean, when I was talking to Mobizita, we, we touched on the issue of the, the vaccination and how some people are skeptical, you know, about getting this vaccination. But when Anjengo Mama, you know, who knows some of these things, what would be your advice to some women in the community who are skeptical about getting the COVID vaccine? I think the major reason why most women have been a bit skeptical about getting vaccinated has been an issue of lack of information but we realize that the government and other uh, civil society organizations and other stakeholders have been playing quite an active role in the last few months to raise awareness around um, the vaccination program so on a personal note i would recommend that people get vaccinated it's better to be safe than to be sorry because ultimately at the end of the day not getting vaccinated might result in you contracting the vaccine uh, the um, the virus and you have your children to worry about as a mother you know so many people depend on you as a woman we it's important that you you are safe and i would recommend it <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. And that was uh, Lynette Dube and Ngovizi Tatonga, our programs officers at Zimbabwe Christian Alliance. I know that uh, Zimbabwe Christian Alliance has been involved in some of the good work in the community. Uh, the first uh, lockdown, that was last year, uh, early last year, I know they were involved in the Feed the Nation campaign because uh, that lockdown was quite hard and many other people or many people in the community could not get food and they're going hungry. And uh, Christian Alliance was in the forefront of feeding uh, uh, quite a number of communities. I also know that they've been involved in uh, uh, you know, trying to find peace, especially in mining communities in Kwanda, where there was serious uh, violence. So this is some of the good work that is done by um, the, the organizations that are working in our communities in Bulawayo, in Zimbabwe, and uh, promoting peace, advocating, and also right now they're involved in trying to encourage people uh, to creating awareness around the issues of uh, COVID-19, because I know with the Christian community, there's quite a number of people who have so many theories about COVID-19. Some don't believe it. Some believe that if you get a, a vaccine, you've already got the mark of the beast and all the misinformation that is going on. So I hope uh, the program is informative and I hope that uh, those who have been hesitant in getting a vaccine, you know, we talk about this, like, why totally vaccine your COVID? So we really encourage people to stay safe, get a vaccination if you can, but also mask and sanitize. My name is Zenzel Ndevele. Till we meet again in other programs, have a good day.